How many times have you picked up a Kindle book and noticed weird spacing or chapters cut off in weird spots or words all jumbled up together? Most of the time, people tend to dismiss these issues as typos, as if the author forgot to add in a space after a word. But more often than not, it's bad formatting. Amazon does its best to check your book's pages before approving it for publication for Kindle, but they can't catch everything. And with just about 7,500 books published every day on Amazon, you can hardly blame them. I'm going to show you how to format your book correctly for Kindle using Microsoft Word without the headache. And the best part is, you only need a few minutes. For the best tips on how to build your business by writing a nonfiction book, subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell to be notified when I post a new video up every week. As a freelance B2B ghostwriter, I have helped dozens of business owners write and publish their first nonfiction books using the exact steps that I'm about to show you for formatting. So let's dive in. First things first, there are some things that make formatting a book a nightmare. Some of these things might just be from your personal settings on your word processor. Other things happen when copy and pasting your text into Microsoft Word from other programs or apps. If you applied any formatting at all to your book, bold lettering, italics, double spaces after your periods, hard indentations, when you force the cursor over by using the space or the tab keys, that's a no-no. Hitting the enter or return button several times to get to the next page, things like that. You will want to clean everything up before moving on to actually formatting your book. You will also want to make sure you clean everything up if you've copy and pasted anything in from a program and aren't sure whether or not that copy is clean. Sometimes everything will look perfect in Microsoft Word, but once you convert it and open it up in Kindle, you can see all the formatting errors. Cleaning up the text by removing all these things before formatting will make your life so much easier and save you money if you're hiring someone to format that book for you. To clean up your text, copy the entire book that's Command A on iMac and Control A on Windows. And then open up your plain text editor. Text edit on iMac or Notepad on Windows. Make sure you select paste and match formatting when you paste. Otherwise, you're just gonna paste all the other formatting issues that we're trying to clear out. Once you have everything sitting in a nice clean file in text edit or Notepad, Save your book in Microsoft Word as a new file for backup, then close and quit the program. This is called the nuclear method of cleaning up your bad formatting to make room for the good formatting, and it catches everything. Next, open your Microsoft Word backup and create a new clean document. Select your entire text from text edit or notepad and paste it into this new document in Microsoft Word. Technically speaking, you could skip the text edit or notepad step and paste your book into the new document as an unformatted text by selecting paste as special followed by unformatted text. However, I've noticed that sometimes skipping the text edit step and pasting directly into a new Microsoft Word document doesn't quite get rid of all the formatting issues. But if your document was fairly clean before this step, we should be okay. Now, you should be staring at a huge, ugly blob of text. Everything, all the same size, same font, and no formatting at all. Perfect. The first thing I do when getting ready to format a book is to change my view from print to draft. Normally when I use Microsoft Word, I like the print layout. But while formatting, I change the view to draft and select show paragraph marks. This makes it easier to find any rogue spaces or other elements. And since we are formatting this for use with a Kindle, I like that it doesn't show the big break between pages. It's just a subtle line where it would break in the print layout. Kindle uses locations instead of page count. 
So we don't need to worry too much about where the majority of these page breaks will fall, but it will still be helpful to add them in when we need them, which I will get to. Next, it's time to set up your styles. Styles is a simple method of applying consistent formatting to every paragraph throughout your document rather than highlighting it bit by bit by bit and changing the font size and type individually. Microsoft Word comes with several styles built in. In the very least, you will need to define styles for your title, subtitle, heading one, which we're gonna use as chapter titles, heading two, which is gonna be used as subheadings within chapters, and headings for any areas that you don't want to be included within the table of contents. Heading three, if needed, these are sub subheadings. And then of course, normal, which is your primary text of the book. To customize the style, right click on the particular style you want to edit and then select modify. Then change the font size and type and spacing. Now, as you go through your book and choose which style to apply, these changes will automatically be applied. A quick note here. There is no need to get fancy when choosing your fonts and styles. You'll notice I have the most universal font imaginable for all of my templates, Times New Roman. It's not that it's my favorite font, it's really not. And it's not that I dislike other fonts. On the contrary, I collect fonts and I use them quite a bit when formatting paperback books for my clients. But when it comes to formatting for Kindle, I use Times New Roman precisely because it's universal and every device will have it, whether they are reading on a proper Kindle device or using a Kindle app on a different tablet or computer. Additionally, since the reader can set the font to be whatever they want it to be while they're reading, they may not even see your font choice. And sometimes your font choice can get really messed up by their settings anyway. By using a universal font, I avoid any such mistakes and I know the book will appear exactly the way I want it to appear. The good news is, this makes your job formatting even easier. You can, if you really want to, use images in place of the chapter headings and titles. By using an image, you ensure that the reader will see the chapter heading exactly the way you want it. However, depending on how they have their device set to zoom, that could cause the chapter heading to appear blurry at times. If you want to use images in place of your chapter headings so that you can take advantage of a custom font, save that for the end. Go through the rest of these steps using text for your headings. Then, once it's time to add in your images, go ahead and replace the headings. As you can probably imagine, how long this takes is going to depend somewhat on how long your book is. But even if you've written the ultimate behemoth of a book, it still shouldn't take you more than a few minutes to go through these steps. Did you write a behemoth? Leave me a comment below and let me know how long your book is. Okay, now that the book has been completely formatted, it's time to go back in and add any emphasis points that you may have had, such as italicizing particular words or phrases, making certain things bold, and things along those lines. The only way to do this is to read through your book, highlighting those words and phrases as you come across them, and using the italics or bold buttons to apply your style. This will also give you a chance to catch any of those last second mistakes that may have been missed during all of your edits. And for the finishing touch, we're going to go back through and add in some page breaks. I said earlier, Kindle uses locations instead of pages, which is why we don't really bother with page numbers during formatting but the actual page breaks are still important. Without them, your chapter headings, as well as your front matter and back matter, can get all jumbled together into the same page. So, starting from the top of your document, add a page break using Command and Return on a Mac or Control Enter on Windows. You'll see it come up on your document like this. I like to make sure I have one paragraph mark on each side of an intentional page break. I've noticed that on some devices, not having that extra space above and below the page break can cause a line to get cut off in an awkward way. 
Where you see two page breaks back to back, that leaves a blank page in your book. This isn't a big deal if it's within the front matter or the back matter, but should not happen in any part of the main part of your book and try to limit how many of these blank pages you use. Amazon does not like it if they think you're using blank pages to try to beef up your book or boost your page count. Only add them in to separate major sections within your book and never more than one at a time. At each chapter, you want to add a page break and make sure there is one paragraph mark on either side of that break to ensure that your chapter headings will be in the right spot. Once the content is finished, now it's time to add in the table of contents. One of the major conveniences of an ebook is an interactive table of contents. In other words, people want to be able to tap or click on a link in your table of contents and have it bring them directly to that page. Luckily, using styles makes it nice and easy to add in a table of contents. So, Go to your table of contents page and add in a custom table of contents from the references tab. Make sure you change the levels options to show one level, otherwise your subheadings will show in the table of contents as well. This is okay if you want them to show in the table of contents, but it can make the table of contents look cluttered if it's not intentional. If you want to choose one of the styles Microsoft Word has provided for you, you can. But for this, I am going to choose one from a template so I can modify the style to match the rest of the book. Click on modify to view the templates available and click on modify again to change the font size and type so that it matches the rest of your book. I like to add in extra space to my table of contents so that tapping fingers like mine can be sure to hit the one that they mean to hit. I know that if I tap on chapter two and accidentally end up tapping on chapter three, I get really mad. Once you're happy with your table of contents, go ahead and click OK and go back to your document. I like to add in the table of contents near the end for a couple of reasons. One, it gives me the chance to read through the book one last time during formatting, so everything will be set in its final spot before adding the table of contents. It will automatically pull in and link to all the headings that I've selected. However, even if you did it first, your table of contents is not set in stone. If you end up making any changes to your book that would push things onto a new page, or if you add a lot of images that push everything around, which we're going to talk about next, or even if you change the titles of your headings, simply right click somewhere on the table of contents and select update field to make sure that those changes are reflected correctly. Okay, last step, adding in the images. Now, I happen to be a minimalist when it comes to books. I prefer the text with very few or even no images. However, especially with nonfiction books, sometimes you need to put in images to help emphasize or illustrate a point. So to add in your images, find the area where you want to add in your photo, then go to insert picture, picture from file. And that's it, you're done. Not bad, right? If you wanna test out your formatting to make sure everything is set up the way it's supposed to be, you can download Amazon's Kindle Previewer. I will, of course, leave a link to that in the description below. And if you'd like, I put together a book formatting template for Kindle you can use. Simply copy your clean text into the template and all my normal styles will be applied to your text auto-magically. If you would like more information on how to write and publish your nonfiction book, go ahead and check out my next video right there. Please go ahead and throw me a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!